Hello again. Hi. Um, so this, uh, I thought I was just about done making scrupulosity videos, but I am making another one because there's something that I've been thinking of lately. Um, and I had more of a nudge this morning after talking to someone, um, of doing another video to stress something that's very important. If you want to get over scrupulosity, I mentioned, in, so I have a bunch of other videos and they're numbered. So, um, I don't even know if this will be the last one. So what I mentioned in the other one is, you know, the one big way to get over scruples is you have to obey your confessor. You have to obey and you have to, um, which is what I, what I did. And, you know, I won't go, I don't want to make this video too long. So I don't want to repeat what I said in the others, but I finally realized I had to obey because when you don't obey your spiritual director, really you, it's, it's a form of pride. It's a spiritual pride because you think you know better and, you know, but there was something that happened that I didn't quite mention in my other, other, other videos, but when I finally got to the tail end of like getting over the scrupulosity, what, there was something really, some crazy thoughts I was having in my mind. Like there was this turning point that was very difficult for me. And I won't go into it because I had all these crazy thoughts, but I finally had to make an act of trust in God. I made a really big act of trust in God. And that was the turning point for me because really you see, I'm okay. So I'm the kind of person that like, I like to be in control. Um, I, you know, I was the oldest of a big family. I have many brothers and sisters. I have a lot of children. I like things a certain way. I'm kind of a perfectionist in some things. So I like to have a certain amount of control over what I'm doing. And, you know, with the scruples, there was like the series of like things I had to do to, to get to get over it. And obedience is definitely, you know, one of them. But the what it really came down to was trusting in God that I'm on the right track. And just trusting and trusting in God's mercy. Um, so that's one thing that uh, that's what I'm here to talk about is you have to trust in God. Um, uh, so one way you can kind of look at it is, and this thought came to me many times was, you know, I think of a high dive. Okay. And I, I have a fear of high dives. I, I don't, I don't know how to dive at all, but just jumping off a high dive freaks me out. But I had this image in my mind, which I must have heard from somewhere else, but at one point in my life, but an image of being on a high dive and jumping off. And when you're jumping off, you are like jumping into the ocean of God's mercy. Okay. So this thought kept coming to me and it's like, I was afraid to do it, but I was like, you got to do it. Um, okay. That, that thought kept coming to me. So that's one analogy that can help you like taking the plunge and trusting in God. Um, you know, Anyone who's out there who's scrupulous, if you're watching this video um, or you know someone who's scrupulous, I've said in my other videos, it is a really, really hard thing to go through. Um, you, I can only describe it as like, you know, I woke up every morning with dread and um, depression and, you know, just, just almost despair, you know, like it's just a terrible, terrible thing to go through. And if you're, I know what it's like, it is, it, it's, it's a very sad, very scary thing to go through. And you think you, it's terrible when you think you're never going to get over it. But I'm here to tell you, you can get over it. You can. Um, you need to be humble enough to obey your spiritual director. So if you're afraid to go to Holy Communion and he tells you to go, just go. The devil's trying to trick you. He doesn't want you to go. He's clever. He knows that if you go to Holy Communion, you're going to get lots of grace because in Holy Communion, you know, we're receiving our Lord himself, his body, blood, soul, and divinity. And we get so much grace from that and, and the grace to see more clearly that we are being scrupulous and that we need to get over this and being scrupulous, you know, you're so absorbed into yourself and it's so easy to just focus on certain sins um, or certain temptations you're getting, you know, and not focus on the big picture of what you need to re really work on. It blinds you. Scruples blind you to what you really need to work on in your life. So I would say, um, you know, when you're being tricked into not going to Holy Communion, go. If your spiritual director tells you to do it, do it. Um, it's on him. It's on the priest. You know, if he, it, it, if he tells you to go, you go. Um, and 
you know, there, I remember reading this book on scrupulosity and it was talking about all these different tricks that are used by the devil to trick you into not going. Um, and sometimes like right at the last minute, you'll be tempted to like not receive our Lord because some fear pops up. Look, you go to Holy Communion, okay? Um, I can't stress that enough because, you know, I started doing that and uh, just, you know, I now I'm at the point where I... I feel guilty when I don't go to Holy Communion because I know I, I know that our, it hurts our Lord when he's waiting there for us and we don't receive him. OK, so if you're still at that point, is you know, I don't know what level of scrupulosity you're at. But if you're really struggling with that, just go to Holy Communion. You'll receive lots of grace and um, grace to more clearly see, you know. Um, and like I said in my other videos, I, I was scrupulous for about 20 years, over 20 years. And. I still consider myself a scrupulous person, but I know how to deal with it now. And some people are prone to scrupulosity maybe their whole life. Um, so it's something, okay, so again, I'm here to tell you, like, if you are struggling, I know what it's like. I, I, if you were sitting in front of me, I'd be like, look, I know it's terrible. And, but you can get over it. I got over it. And I've known others who've gotten over it. Many people have, but you really have to you know, obey and trust in God and don't turn your back on God. Once you do it, you mean, you know, you make that act of trust, like, Lord, I trust, him, trust in you that I'm on the right path. Um, again, my, my videos are directed at, um, to my fellow Catholics. Okay. I'm speaking to Catholics here. Um, uh, I'm trying to look at my notes here. Um, uh, you know, many people are, especially with scrupulosity, you may be tormented, like I said in my other videos, by bad thoughts. Just especially maybe with thoughts of impurity or, you know, you know, which refers to the sixth commandment. Um, you might be tormented by by images in your mind. But look, stop paying so much attention to those things and just realize we're human. We're tempted. We get all don't ne never be surprised. I was told this one time. Don't ever be surprised how horrible a thought you can get in your mind. I mean, priests can get them, nuns can get those thoughts, whatever, whoever you are, like, you know, the Pope, I'm doing, you can get whatever thought in your mind, but that doesn't mean you're consenting to these thoughts, okay? Um, we are attracted to beauty in this world. Like, we're attracted to beauty. And if you see a beautiful guy, a beautiful girl, just thank God, like, thank you, God, for making beautiful people. That's what my spiritual director told me to say, like, thank God for making for making beautiful people and putting beauty in this world. You know, we don't have to turn every, you know, the devil tries to trick us with all kinds of stuff. So don't let him win. If you know you're scrupulous, look, that's the first step. If you know you're scrupulous, you're scrupulous. Okay. You're not going to get over this unless you are obedient and trust in God. And otherwise you are going to stay this way for the rest of your life. And do you want to be miserable for the rest of your life? I mean, I know that when I was going through like the two very difficult years, two particular years that were hard, Every day was like, I would compare it to, if you watch Lord of the Rings, okay, you probably have, right? Um, Frodo, when he had to take, take the ring to Mordor, like, that was misery. That was just, I mean, like, that, that feeling of doom and that sadness and that dread and just getting up. It just, it's terrible. It's a terrible, terrible feeling. So that's why I compared it to, like, that feeling of Mordor, you know, when you're taking the ring to Mordor. That's what scruples are like, okay? And you probably know that already. Well, you, you don't have to feel that way. You can start, you know, like today, make that act. You have to make that strong act of the will. Ask, ask God for the grace to do it, um, to trust in him, to obey and to move on with your life. And um, um, what was I going to say? Um, you can get over this. You can have a happy Easter. There's two weeks. There's almost little more than two weeks till this till Easter and you can make it you can it can be the happiest Easter for you if you make the act of trusting God and like just let the scruples be be done with them um just don't and I just can't stress enough that like trusting God because once I made the act of trust in God I didn't ever want to go back on it and I have been tempted to go back on it I've been tempted to to question like am I doing am I, is what I'm doing right um but once I made that act of trust in God, I couldn't go back on it because I know it would hurt our Lord and I didn't want to do that. Um, 
if you have any, okay, I don't want to repeat a lot of things I already said in my other videos. So my other videos talk about how I dealt with the scruples, you know, uh, but okay. So you might wonder sometimes like, well, why do I have scruples? Why did God let this happen to me? And sometimes God does allow the scruples because it helps to bring you closer to him, um, helps you be more careful to not commit mortal sins ever again. Um, or, or I don't I don't know if you've ever committed a mortal sin, but if you ever have in the past, you know, before you were scrupulous, um, you know, just makes you have a, makes you never want to commit a mortal sin. Like I've made up my mind. I've told God many times, I said, God, let me die rather than commit a mortal sin. I don't want to ever lose God's friendship. I want to be his child forever. And, um, you know, I became a child of God in my baptism and I stayed a child of God by being in the state of grace. If you're, if you're in the state of grace, you're a child of God after your, you know, after your baptism. Um, so anyway, you might, I, sometimes, so sometimes God does allow scruples to bring you closer to him, but that's not always the case. Sometimes they're from the devil. And if they are, they are, they last a long time. Okay. Um, you know, I sometimes have, I've have told a friend before that if I wasn't scrupulous, sometimes I wonder where I would be. Um, because I am a very fun loving person. I'm spiritually lazy sometimes. And if I wasn't scrupulous, I don't know how seriously I would have taken my faith. I may have been the opposite. I may have been very lax and not, um, not, not very careful. So, you know, scrupulosity does, uh, it's tough, it's horrible, but if once you're over it, um, once, well, once you know how to deal with it, it's, you're going to be kind of almost grateful that you went through it. Okay. And also, um, you, maybe God wants you to help. Maybe God's having you go through it so that you can help other people in the future. Because I just know from my own experience, many years ago, my spiritual director told me, he said, use what you know to help others. So if you, if you have a spiritual director, okay, obey your spiritual director, get over the scrupulosity, right? You can do it. I did it. So can you with God's grace. Um, but if you don't have a spiritual director, look, I'm here to help you. And my spiritual director told me to help you. So take it as coming from my spiritual director. There's a lot of people in this world and there's not that many spiritual directors. Okay. So I was very blessed that right when I look back on my life, I can see how God put people in my life to help me. And it would be very ungrateful to him, to God, to not appreciate and to recognize when he has sent me help. Okay. He sent me, he sent me lifeboats throughout my life. And, um, you know, so I'm one of those, I'm one of those lifeboats trying to help you now, like trying to do what I can to help you. And, um, so you, you know, and then once you get through this, you will have a much happier life. Once now that I'm over the scrupulosity and I, okay, I still consider myself a scrupulous person, but I know how to handle scrupulosity now. Um, and I realize I, I've come to the point where I'm like, I'm probably going to be this way my whole life, you know, but, um, but I, I would say, like I said, I'm much happier now. I mean, I love, I used to dread going to mass. I used to dread going to Holy communion because I just, I was so focused on myself, but you really, God wants us to focus on him. And how many times did our Lord say in the gospel, like go in peace, like he would forgive, you know, our Lord wanted you to, wants us to be happy. And he said many times he wants you, he wanted, he said, be at peace or peace be with you or whatever, whatever he said about peace, you know, he doesn't want you to be miserable. And the devil is eternally sad because he's, he's in hell and he wants to make you sad and make you miserable and make you despair and think God doesn't love you and that you'll never be good enough. Don't listen to him. Don't let him win. You do what God wants you to do and trust in him. I know it's hard. I know, I know. And it's, um, it's very difficult because you're going to be scared. You're going to be scared out of your wits sometimes thinking you're doing the wrong thing, but you're not. And eventually it's going to get easier. And I would compare it. Um, the priest said, um, he compared it to like your spiritual muscles, you know, like you have to work your arm, make it strong when you're doing like physical exercise. Well, you have to work the spiritual muscles of your soul. You have to train yourself 
to know how to handle these things. And eventually, yeah, at first you're, it's going to hurt. Like, you know, like the day after you first do exercise, your muscles hurt so badly. You're like, oh man. But eventually if you keep it up, you get used to it. Well, that's what happened to me. At first it was very painful to, to, to get over the scruples because I was going against my own will. And um, I was so used to listening to my fears and doing what I wanted and not listening to my spiritual director. Um, but once I started obeying, once I finally made up my mind, I'm going to, I'm going to be con, you know, obey my spiritual director and trust in God. I reworked my spiritual muscles to the point where now, um, I, I'm much stronger and it doesn't hurt so much anymore. Occasionally I will get scared. Uh, some fears will pop up, but then I've learned how to nip them in the bud and then just, you know, nope, I'm not going there. And, um, um, and I've made up my mind. I'm not going to be afraid to die. Um, I'm going to trust in God my whole life, trust in him on my deathbed, trust that I've done what I can and I'm doing what God wants. So, I mean, I'm not perfect. I still have to overcome many faults, but they're not mortal sins, you know? So, um, I'm looking at my notes here cause I don't want to miss anything. Um, I just wanted to stress that I know how you're feeling because sometimes when you're going through scrupulosity, you think you just feel so alone and so scared, but you're not. Um, God knows how you feel and he wants you to get over this. Okay. So, and there's been, there's been saints that have gone through this. Like St. Therese of the child, Jesus went through this for two years and she compared it to martyrdom. So, I mean, it's not martyrdom, but she compared it to that. That's how horrible it is. You know? Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, that's about it. Um, I, I, Pray for, I will pray for you. I've been trying to pray more this Lent. Um, you know, I wish sometimes I forget to say things in these videos and then I get frustrated because later on, like, should have said that. Um, uh, yeah, I, I don't know what else to say. So, okay. Well, I hope that helps and I, I love you and I'm praying for you. Please pray for me because I've got, I got a lot on my plate too. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Bye.